sur euh, euh, la caricature dans la presse, euh, le contenu et les allusions antisémites sont toujours inacceptables. Euh, C'est de, de reprendre des, euh, des, des allusions qui datent de bien des décennies de façon absolument inacceptable. Euh, C'est pour ça que euh, in, on, on, on condamne comme étant inacceptable et euh, je suis content qu'il y ait eu des excuses et que ça a été retiré, mais euh, ça n'aurait jamais dû être publié en la première fois. Ben, on, on va voir. C'est à, à l'organisme et c'est à la presse d'y réfléchir longuement. Euh, mais euh, au moins, ils se sont excusés, ils l'ont retiré, mais ça n'aurait jamais dû se passer en, 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 en début. Um, first of all, uh, on the, uh, la presse caricature, um, it is unacceptable to bring back uh, anti-Semitic tropes and illusions like that. It is distasteful and exactly uh, the wrong thing to do, particularly in these times. Um, It is a good thing that it was pulled. It was a good thing that they've apologized, but it never should have happened in the first place. Earlier today, in a scrum uh, exiting the Liberal Caucus, the Minister of Canadian Heritage failed to condemn a blatantly anti-Semitic trope that was published this morning by La Presse. In fact, she said that discussions around this topic in response to a question on this were required compassion and respect. There is nothing compassionate or respectful about what La Presse published this morning. It was a Nazi-era anti-Semitic trope, and the Minister of Canadian Heritage had a duty to condemn it. Canadian Jews are facing massive rising levels of anti-Semitism, and for the Minister of Canadian Heritage to say this was about the freedom of the press, was an abject failure in her part to address anti-Semitism and to condemn it. There's nothing about freedom of the press uh, in this cartoon this morning. The, 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 the press have the right to do what they want, but they published, La Presse published, a blatant example of Nazi-era anti-Semitic imagery. Uh, I was shocked when I saw the fact that this, uh, this minister danced around this issue as opposed to taking a firm Uh, and solid stance. Uh, I believe that she owes a clarification and more importantly an apology for her uh, horrendous abject failure to, to, to condemn this image. Thank you. Merci. Donc, ce matin, la ministre du Pascal Saint-Onge, ministre du patrimoine canadien, lorsqu'elle a été questionnée concernant la caricature euh, antisémite qui a été publiée dans la presse, la ministre n'a pas voulu euh, blâmer la presse, n'a pas voulu euh, dire rien, sinon que c'était… Euh, les mots exacts, donnez-moi les mots exacts, Michel. She said that… Sorry. I'm sorry. Il y a une conversation. Ah oui. Elle, je reprends. Donc, la ministre, à la sortie, a répondu à la question « Qu'est-ce que vous pensez de cette caricature antisémite publiée dans la presse? » Elle a dit « Nous devons avoir des conversations respectueuses avec compassion et respect. » On s'excuse, mais ce n'est pas ce qu'il faut faire. On s'attend du ministre du patrimoine qu'elle puisse directement condamner ce genre de caricature. Oui, nous savons que la presse a retiré, nous savons que la presse a fait leurs excuses, mais il reste que le geste a été posé. Et on s'attend de la ministre du patrimoine du Canada de dire qu'une caricature de ce genre n'avait pas sa place dans un média, n'a pas sa place dans la conjoncture qu'on vit actuellement, d'avoir une caricature qui représente, et les gens qui ne le savent pas, c'est des images qui représentent des, des symboles qui étaient utilisés lors de la Deuxième Guerre mondiale par le régime nazi pour influencer la population à décrire les Juifs d'une façon telle qu'on l'a vu dans la caricature de ce matin. Donc, on demande à la ministre Saint-Onge de s'excuser, de se reprendre et de dire, de condamner ce, ce qui est arrivé avec la caricature de la presse de ce matin. Merci. Thank you. After uh, caucus and did call it anti-Semitic, is that not? This is the Minister of Canadian Heritage, who was asked and had a moment to show moral clarity and failed to do so. Do you think the government should be taking some kind of action beyond beyond condemning it? I mean. With, a conversation about uh, censorship here, but do you think that there's a role for government in this? Uh, the role for government is to ensure that the levels of anti-Semitism anti that the Jewish community in Canada is facing are, are reduced, and that shows by showing leadership in, in, in moments when the chips are down, like they were this mor morning when the Minister of Canadian Heritage failed to condemn this 
blatant anti-Semitic trope. The block, the block leader was out saying, you know, he's not con he, he doesn't want to get into that, you know, he doesn't want to talk about censorship. And I'm just wondering, are you concerned that government taking action on this something like this? This isn't about freedom of the press. This is about elected members of parliament, the government, opposition members, uh, standing against anti-Semitism and calling this out for what it is. This is a well-known anti-Semitic trope. The, uh, you know, picturing of a Jewish person as a vampire is something that we, was used in the 1930s in, in Nazi propaganda. Uh, this is something that every parliamentarian has a duty to understand and protect against. It was published. Every parliamentarian should be, feel as comfortable as I am and as angry as I am that this was published in a major Canadian journal uh, today. Uh, this, this should never have passed editorial standards. And uh, the fact that, again, the, med the Minister of Canadian Heritage, that she failed to say this, is, is just, it's, it's atrocious, it's appalling. So she should be the one to answer for that. And do you think that the, 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 the cartoon should be retracted? I think she should be immediately calling up uh, members of the Jewish community to ask how she can uh, make this right with them. But donc ça n'a pas sa place dans un journal comme la presse. Et c'est pour ça, de toute façon, la presse l'a retiré. Et euh, j'ai vu un texte d'excuses de la part de la presse qui ont confirmé que c'était une erreur de leur part. Ça, c'est fait. Mais là, maintenant, c'est la ministre du patrimoine, Pascal Saint-Onge, qui a refusé oui, mais de blâmer... mais c'est quoi la presse, selon vous, alors? C'est quoi ben, la définition de la liberté de presse? Est-ce qu'on permet des propos antisémites de cette forme-là dans la presse au Canada? Est-ce que c'est permis de faire ça? Non. La presse l'a retiré pour cette raison-là. Premièrement, on n'aurait jamais dû le publier. La, la caricature de Chapelot n'avait pas sa place. Mais là, la ministre du patrimoine, ça fait plusieurs fois qu'elle refuse de, de, de prendre ses responsabilités dans différents dossiers. Ça, c'en est un qui est important. Elle devrait tout simplement dire que ça n'avait pas sa place, que c'était des propos antisémites. C'est tout. Mais elle ne l'a pas fait. Pourquoi? Et bon, le leader du gouvernement l'a fait. Pourquoi la ministre du patrimoine, c'est sa responsabilité de, de voir euh, aux médias? Elle refuse de faire. Donc, on aimerait qu'elle s'excuse. Merci. Thank you, folks. Uh, bonne journée de la francophonie. My name is Jenna Suds, Minister of Families, Children and Social Development. And here today with my incredible colleagues uh, to celebrate, frankly, the incredible work that went into receiving royal assent last night for Bill C-35, an act concerning the early learning and child care. Uh, this is such an incredible milestone that I share uh, with many of my colleagues. Uh, I would like to specifically mention uh, Karina Gold, uh, who really shepherded moving this, this bill, this act forward, as well as uh, formerly in the role, Minister Duclos, uh, at the time as well, acting as Parliamentary Secretary, Yara Sachs, and of course my Parliamentary Secretary, Elizabeth Briere. Uh, an incredible amount of work has gone into moving this legislation forward, which is really all about ensuring that families for generations to come know that our government and governments to come will be there for them in supporting them in providing early learning and child care. That's early learning and child care that is affordable, that is inclusive, that is accessible, and is high quality. Mm -hmm. These are the four core principles that are laid out in the legislation that bind all governments in the decades to come to ensure that we are there supporting families in what we know are hard years while they raise their families. The act itself uh, is a commitment, as I mentioned, for years to come. We've made a commitment working with the provinces and territories and Indigenous partners, an almost $30 billion commitment to move forward with these five-year agreements to ensure that families across this country have access to $10 a day childcare. And I'm happy to share with you that over three quarters of a million families are now accessing our national early learning and child care program. Good job. That's over 750 families who get to access high quality affordable care. This has been life changing for so many moms and dads and so many little ones who now can have access to high quality care. We've also seen that fees have reduced across this country in every province and territory to at least 50%. And as of April 1st, we are at eight provinces and territories that have reached $10 a day, wow. two years ahead of schedule. 
We've also seen almost 100,000 new spaces across the country announced so that we are reaching our goal of accessibility. And by the end of these five-year agreements, we will see 250,000 new spaces across this country. At no point in history have we seen such fundamental shift and such incredible progress in not only ensuring affordability for families, but also ensuring access by increasing the number of spaces by almost 100,000 in a very short amount of time. We've seen the impacts of this. We're seeing women's participation in the workforce increase. We've seen record levels now at 85% of working age women being able to access or be in the workforce. So it's paying dividends. I have the honor of being able to speak to parents across the country on a regular basis. And I'll share with you, I was in Peterborough last week, and I had the opportunity to sit down with Rayla. And Rayla shared with me, she's a Trent University student studying Indigenous studies with plans of going on to become a teacher. And she got pregnant during her second year of studies. And the only reason she's still studying today mm -hmm. is because she was able to access a space at affordable rates, 50% reduction in fees on campus in Peterborough. There's countless stories like this, folks, of the impact that this is having. And I'm honored to get to do this work along with all of these incredible colleagues who continue to advocate and to push and to ensure mm -hmm. that the province and territories are alongside us, that we see new spaces available, and that we see these savings for families across the country. Here in Ontario, the families are saving on average $8,500 wow. per child right now. And that's ahead of once we see them get to $10 a day by 2026. So these are meaningful, meaningful changes and savings that families are experiencing. And I will add that this is on top of the Canada Child Benefit, which co coincidentally goes out every month, including today, to families across the country. I think both of these programs demonstrate the commitment that our government has made to ensuring affordability for families here in Ontario and across every province and territory in this country. So with that, um, I thank the Senate and all of those who worked hard, the advocates across this country mm -hmm. who contributed, who came to committees, who testified, who helped get us this bill over the finish line. Uh, it's an incredible achievement and I look forward to seeing the impact, not just today, for families today, but for families for decades to come. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? Can you talk about why it's necessary to um, have this legislation to protect this program? Absolutely, and, and thank you for the question. You know, by moving forward, by legislating this, this early learning and child care system, it provides certainty. It ensures that no matter who is in government, we have an act that families know is in place and gives them certainty that governments for decades to come will continue to support affordable, inclusive, accessible, high quality, early learning and childcare. We know, we hear uh, the opposition, we hear um, their uh, attempt to paint this uh, legislation and this system as chaos, as something that they would not support. And I think it's important to provide certainty and to move forward in ensuring this legislation is in place, as I said, for families for decades to come. Thank you. Um, on the $10 a day promise, there's obviously been record inflation for the last several years. The cost of providing daycare is going up. What is the implications for the $10 a day promise moving forward? Mm -hmm. Uh, so, as I mentioned, almost a $30 billion commitment uh, at the time when agreements were signed, they're five-year agreements, in which uh, provinces and territories uh, signed, eyes wide open of what the expectations were as far as creating and contributing to that 250,000 new spaces in growth and 
getting to $10 a day. Uh, I continue to engage with all of my colleagues of provinces and territories across this country. And I, and I have to tell you, uh, it's really incredible to see uh, the, pro the progress in places like PEI, in places like Nova Scotia, uh, who recently uh, we were out to celebrate the signing of their most recent action plan and the progress that they've made uh, in their goals. So all that to say, um, you know, I think it is incredibly doable. I am very confident that we will get to the goals that we have set out uh, in the agreements and we will see the provinces and territories uh, working alongside us to deliver this for families who need it. Thank you. Uh, just, if I can do a sort of lateral pivot to school food, I uh, just want to ask again, is there any uh, chance of having some of that five billion over, or one billion over five years, sorry, <laughs> Uh, in the, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I mean, if you'll agree, uh, over the next five years in the next upcoming budget, or is that something that is still being worked on for this year? Uh, yeah, so thank you for the question, and of course, um, and I think the folks, uh, all of my <laughs> colleagues that are with me here today uh, will share their enthusiasm and the need uh, to move forward uh, with a national uh, school food program. Uh, all that to say, um, as you are likely aware, we did do consultation uh, throughout the last year. We've put forward the As We Heard It report. Work is underway to develop that policy and what that will look like, and we will await the budget uh, for further information. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Can I get your uh, reaction quickly on what the procurement minister was talking about today? They found three cases of uh, fraudulent contracts with IT subcontractors. They referred it to the RCMP. They say they've investigated this, they've looked into it, they're coming out with a, uh, a supplier integrity office. Are you satisfied with that? Look, uh, it's been 17 months of continued pressure by Conservatives at committee to get the uh, Justin Trudeau Liberals to pay attention to the fact that there's all kinds of grift and scandal and corruption uh, inside uh, the NDP Liberal government. This is um, a tremendous problem that when we blew the whistle on the Arrive scam, uh, $60 million we think, uh, according to the Auditor General, um, that the, the Liberals voted against even have the Auditor General uh, investigating it. And that's the type of transparency that they're not willing to uh, to put forward. And only once caught are they looking to take, um, you know, uh, make some motion and try and confuse Canadians that they're taking some kind of action. But let's be clear that this is a problem uh, that's made in Justin Trudeau's Ottawa. And uh, common sense conservatives are going to continue to fight to expose the corruption and waste. And uh, and frankly, um, you know, they, they need to name names. We, we don't know who has uh, been implicated in this. And it's only with persistent digging and fighting uh, fighting the filibusters and, and cover-ups attempts by Liberal and NDP MPs that we've been able to get any answers, and we're going to continue to fight for that. Are Thank you, you so much.